Okay guys, welcome back to Adventures with AK. Today I'm gonna be going over some goose calling tips for you new guys, and maybe not even new guys, maybe guys who are have been experienced hunters and they're just looking for other tips before the season gets rolling around. So, as you saw in the title, there is a, a big secret to this video, and uh, I'm gonna get right to it, and that is gonna be this call. Now some of you guys who have been around for a while, you, who knows when the last time is you saw a long flute call, um, to you new guys, you've probably never even seen one before. You see everyone using the short read calls. Um, yeah, this is kind of how goose hunting calling started, was these long flutes. And uh, they've evolved to these short read calls. But I have stuck to the roots, and I have actually always used a long flute. And uh, quite a few reasons why. And uh, yeah, I'm going to dive into those through this video and uh, help you guys get started on using them. So, you might ask why are you using a long flute when, like, like I just said, it's evolved to a short recall. Well, there's a couple different reasons. One, you're being an outlier using this. And in my opinion, with waterfowl hunting, if you're doing something different than everyone else, typically you're going to be doing the right thing. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be doing crazy things, but a good example that I always use, when I'm on public land, I see every single spread has like a mojo. I won't. I'll focus on water motion and I tend to do a little bit better. Everyone's using a short read call. I'll stick to the long read. They're hearing the exact same short read calls every spread they go into, but I hit them with a few clucks and a few moans with this and it sounds just a little bit more realistic. Okay, um, another reason why, super easy to call. Very easy to learn. Um, it's almost so easy that the people that I've helped starting calling with this, they, they overthink it just because it's so easy, especially compared to duck calling where you have to activate your vocal cords and you know really vibrate your lips into a call. This is just air to, to begin with. You can get more diverse with it and get more complicated with it as it goes on. I'll show you that here later in the video. So with the short read call, it's a call that I've never even really bothered learning. It got big maybe 12 to 15 years ago. It's when that really exploded onto the market and everyone switched over. I even bought one to try to mess with and I just couldn't get it tuned right. I got I got an old night and hail. Um, some, I don't know the model, but it was one of their original short read calls. And uh, I just didn't like it. I didn't like how hard I had to work to get the sound right. And some guys love it. They love tuning it and getting that sound down and getting it the right way that they like it. And that's cool. If, if you're into that, that's awesome. But I like to keep it simple. Um, yeah, this works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So that's my view on it. Um, yeah, really easy call to blow. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into a couple clucks here. And I don't have a short read to call because I honestly don't even, I, I don't really know how to use one. I've never bothered. Um, so we're just, we're not gonna be able to compare anything, but you guys will get the sound of just one of these. All right, I'm just gonna give a few clucks here. <laughs> so in my opinion, that sounds more realistic than a lot of guys I hear calling short read. Um, you know, you go down to like a park or a local pond where there's geese at and you just listen, you hear stuff like that more than the kind of chaotic calling that you hear from those short read guys who were just cluck, 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 chattering away. This sounds much more realistic. Now I get the idea of the short read. You're just kind of getting those birds attention and you're mimicking more birds than one. I totally get that. But if you go down there and listen, how many, how often do you hear sporadic calling like that? If you focus more on realism, I think this is going to be the call for you. So like I said, once you get started blowing these, you'll find that it is real simple. There is no vocal cords being used. There is no vibration in my lips. It's just... That's it. It's a slow, fast stop. And that, that's all I'm doing. And I'm just closing my lips. It's still really short, fast air, but I'm closing my lips right after I do it and uh, it's making that abrupt honk, stop, all right? Um, and like I said, you can graduate up to just from clucks like that to longer calls, you can play with it. And you know, once you get the initial cluck down, it's real easy to play with your calls. And then you can activate your vocal cords and maybe get into that mode of, you are mimicking more than a few geese. Cause there's some days I've hunted where those geese want to be called at until they are feet hanging, all right? And uh, those are tough. They're definitely tougher days when you're rocking these, um, but it does make it fun. And uh, you can really get into some pretty cool series of calling. And uh, a lot of people think, you know, if you rock a flute like this, that that's all you're succumed to is just clucks and moans and real simple calling, but that's not the case. All right, so let's get into that. So getting into a little bit more diverse stuff, activate those vocal cords, um, more air, and it's something you just have to work on. You're not gonna pick up this call right off the bat and start doing this. 
this takes a while. I mean, it, this took me a long time to get this particular calling sequence down. And uh, I use it a lot, a lot of times when birds are turning, like if they, they buzz us from behind us, I'm trying to get their attention to turn back and look at us, or they're going away. I'm trying to get them to hit that turnaround. Um, pretty much doing anything but coming in, this is a call that you can, it's almost like a comeback call, but a little bit more exaggerated, all right? So let's get into a couple. <laughs> And it's, it's very similar to the short, fast air I was doing for the regular cluck, but it, you can kind of hear, if you go back and watch some of my other hunting videos, you can hear my vocal cords being activated. And I'm just, voot, 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 and I am vibrating my lips a little bit. And that's just to get a couple more different octaves in there and uh, faster movements, fa faster air coming out, choppier. So you're getting cluck, 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 cluck. There's no same call in a row. And it's similar to a short read sequence, but it's with the flute, in my opinion, a lot easier to blow. So something to think about if you are considering getting into calling. Love the flute. I think it is a very underrated call and a call that I, I don't think I know anyone else besides maybe one or two people that use these actively while they goose hunt. So something to think about. They're also real cheap, okay? So, viable option. I get a lot of comments on my more popular goose hunting videos from the past couple of years who, you know, they notice that I'm rocking a flute and they'll comment. They're like, I can't believe you, you still use a flute. Um, and my, my response is just like I've told you guys right now, uh, it, it works for me. You know, it, it, it's something I've used since I've started hunting. I've, I learned how to use this call when I was 10 years old maybe. And I've just been, I'm 25 now, I've been practicing that since then. And I remember when I first started, that's all I could do is just hit a couple clucks and that's it. And just, you know, these last few years, I've really started digging into more diverse calling, getting more unique with my cadences and my sequences of calling. And uh, now it sounds pretty good, I think. Um, but it just takes practice. And it's one of those things you, you it, I think this call's easier to pick up, like to start at than a short read. I've tried them both. I'm also impartial to this one because I've had success with it. I like it. I like it more than short reads. So it's something to think about. If you're just getting into calling, good option. You can get these dirt cheap. I don't know what brand this is, but you go on Amazon. I mean, I guarantee you could find one under 30 bucks. And uh, the, a lot of the companies that make short read calls, they also make the flutes, but they just don't, they know it's not a big market for them. So they don't really advertise them as much. You don't really see them, but uh, definitely a good one to get into. So think about it, all right? Think about getting into one of these and uh, worst case scenario, you spend 30 bucks on a call you don't like. That's not too big a deal. You can go and get your short read if you want one. So something to consider. Okay guys, so we are gonna wrap up with that. I hope this was helpful to you new guys and maybe shed some light on this call to guys who have been with a short read their whole lives. Um, I've gotten some strange looks from guys, like new guys that I hunt with who have blown a short read their whole lives and they see me pull this out and they're like, I've had people ask me what that is. <laughs> so they don't know what it is. Um, that's just how outdated, I wouldn't say outdated, but underutilized this call is. So uh, definitely would recommend getting one of these. Um, I think they're great. Obviously you hear them, they sound great. I think they sound more realistic, especially if you hunt in areas that have more greater Canada geese. We don't have any lessers here in central Illinois. If we do, they're very few and far between. And I know those short read calls really tend more to the lessers, the cackling geese. We don't get those here. We get the big monster geese, you know, the big dogs that you see. Um, so yeah, th this sounds a lot more like a, a greater Canada goose as opposed to a lesser. So that could be something to consider as well as your area, what you're hunting. So if you're in the up, the northern part of the Midwest, Wisconsin, Illinois, probably Minnesota, Iowa, in in the you know in that area, th this is a good consideration for you because I don't think we get a whole lot of lessers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's different for where you're at. But uh, here in central Illinois, northern Illinois, it's rare to see a group of lessers. Uh, so yeah, hope this guy's helped you out. If it did, give me a thumbs up on this video. I uh, would love to get this video out to more folks who are looking to get into calling or curious about the old flute. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not. Duck season's coming up in one week. A lot of exciting things coming up. So if you're a big duck hunter, I am too. Got some exciting videos coming out. Hopefully some helpful tip videos coming out. So hit that subscribe button and we will see you guys on the next one.